Breast Milk Program with Fibber McGee and Molly. The first evaporated milk, Pet Milk, presents Fibber McGee and Molly with Bill Thompson, Gail Gordon, Dick LeGrand, Cliff Arquette, Ken Christie, and me, Harlow Wilcox. The show is written by Don Quinn and Phil Leslie and directed by Max Hutto, with music by the King's Men and Billy Mills Orchestra. When you give your baby pet evaporated milk, you're doing far more than satisfying his hunger. You're giving him the ideal start toward a lifetime of sound teeth, strong, straight bones, and a sturdy, well-developed body. And these benefits are long-lasting. They're benefits you have a right to expect from pet milk, because pet milk provides the right combination of protective whole milk substances plus vitamin D, the sunshine vitamin. They are the reasons why doctors everywhere recommend pet milk, the first evaporated milk, as the first food for babies. Are you giving your child pet milk? <laughs> When a small boar thinks he is large caliber, it's time somebody pulled the trigger on him. <laughs> and look who's making like a big shot businessman as we go to 79 Wistful Vista and join Fibber McGee and Molly. What's that, Mac? Speak up, man. We got a bad connection. Yeah, I got the contract right in front of me, Mac. But I don't like the language on line 12, paragraph 6, page 27. When I go into a deal like this, Mac, I want to have everything so obscure even a child can understand it. <laughs> okay, Mac. And what did General MacArthur say to that? It wasn't General MacArthur. It was old man McDonald of the Third National Bank. You know, the guy that if you were starving to death and he was running a bakery, he'd toss you the whole out of a small donut. <laughs> that bad, McGee. I think Mr. McDonald is rather sweet. Oh, he is. He's sweeter than a bucket of honey till you want to do some business with the bank. Then he gets nastier than a bee stung tarantula with an ulcerated fang. <laughs> That's why I'm reading the fine print in this here contract. And adding some of my own. I don't like to be nosy, sweetheart, but what contract? This one here. Third National is making a deal with me to develop some real estate for him. Ought to make rather a pretty penny on it. Why don't you ever get into a deal where you make a nifty nickel? <laughs> <laughs> or maybe a delicious dime. <laughs> or maybe even a dandy little dollar. <laughs> when I says pretty penny, kiddo, I was just using a cataphorical expression. <laughs> now, <laughs> paragraph 13, page 22. Hmm, pretty tricky. Hey, who's a good lawyer? Well, the last time I was up on a murder rap, Oh, I... come on. <laughs> Be serious. There's millions involved in this thing, and I've got to have some legal advice. How about Mr. Relwick? Who? Mr. Relwick. Isn't he the attorney who got you off the time you leaped on the mounted policeman's horse and chased that bank robber who turned out to be a Federal Reserve messenger who was running because it looked like rain and you got pinched for being a horse thief? <laughs> You mean Mr. Relwick of Relwick, Fraser, Relwick, Smicker, Relwick, Amsterdam, and Relwick at 14th and... Oh, is that you, Mert? Ah, <laughs> oh, dear, her again. <laughs> How's every little thing, Mert? Is, eh? What's that, Mert? His cousin Lulu got thrown off a train and busted three ribs. That's, that's too bad. Huh? Oh, busy, eh? Well, I'll hold the line, Mert. Is your cousin Lulu going to sue the railroad? Wasn't any railroad, kiddo. She was rehearsing for her wedding and tripped on her train. <laughs> Hello? Hello, is this Relwick, Fraser, Relwick, Smicker, Relwick, Amsterdam, and Relwick? Let me talk to Mr. Relwick. I don't know his first name, but he's the one between Smicker and Amsterdam. Uh, huh? He is. Oh, well, I'll call back later. How much later? Fifteen years. <laughs> He's 
he's in the clink for bribing a jury. <laughs> oh, well, it's from the other lawyers. Come in. Oh, it's Ollie from the Elks Club, McGee. Come in, Ollie. Hi, Ollie. Well, hello, missus. Hello, McGee. What you doing, writing letters? No, I'm working on a contract, Ollie. Got a big deal on with the Third National Bank. Legal stuff. Oh, that legal business. That's so complicated. You know, I was on the jury once. <laughs> It was a murder trial, and I was a foreman of the URI. Yes. Oh, my goodness, that must have been exciting. How long did it take, Ollie? Well, Mrs. V was locked up in a nice hotel room with good food, get paid six dollars a day. He never had it figured. <laughs> so we reach verdict in 15 minutes, and then we play pinochle for three days. <laughs> well, this thing here is a legal contract, Ollie, very tricky, you know. Party of the first part does herewith depose as stated here under to wit, that kind of stuff. I got two ipso factos left over, and I'm looking for a place to put them. <laughs> well, that law stuff I don't misunderstood much about, McGee, but... <laughs> I tell my liberous boy, Lars, I says, Lars, when you grow up, you be a lawyer. Yeah. And he say, why, Papa? And I say, well, in lawsuit are three people. The complainer, the defender, and the lawyer. Somebody always loses, but never the lawyer. <laughs> His uncle started out to be a lawyer, Uncle Dennis. Yes, yes. Poor yeah. Uncle Dennis. Never could pass the bar. <laughs> Take my advice, Ollie. If your kid Lars is going to be a lawyer, have him have his teacher learn him a lot of Latin. You need to learn a lot of Latin to study law. Why is that, I wonder? Then the way I figure it, Mrs. Latin is a dead language. Suppose you don't say something right in it, who's suing you? You your Caesar? <laughs> a great professional, Ollie. If you got the personality for it. Oh, sure. Personality is a great thing to have. You betcha. A little Lars, he asked me once what is the difference between personality and character. Mm -hmm. And I say, Lars, personality is what you are when lots of people are here. Character is what you are when everybody goes home, so I go home too. So, <laughs> so long. Billy Mills in the orchestra and all my love. bank hereby agrees that if said Fibber McGee fails to hold up his end of the contract, <laughs> said bank will pay said McGee anyhow said amount of said dough. Said who? <laughs> <laughs> My goodness, Jerry, the bank will never go. Say, where did you get all the cookbooks? <laughs> 
from the library, only there won't happen to be cookbooks, Molly. This is law books. This is law. Very interesting, too. To whom? Lawyer. <laughs> you take here on page 612, for instance, in the case of James H. Reepel, alias Creepy Reepel, accused of stealing the belfry off the Union Street Church. Stealing a belfry? <laughs> That's a pretty high hijack. <laughs> <laughs> the law says, and I quote, in the case of the People versus Creepy Reepel for stealing a steeple, <laughs> counsel for Reepel held the people failed to place Reepel, the creepy steeple stealer, on the steeple at the time the people accused Reepel of the steeple stealing. <laughs> Further, said Reepel was too feeble to creep up the steeple, and the people must... Hold it, creepy, climb down. <laughs> we have company. Come in. Oh, it's the old-timer, McGee. Hello, Mr. Old-timer. Oh, uh, hi, old-timer. Hello there, kids. Hey, what you doing with all the books, Johnny? Homework? <laughs> Working on a contract, old-timer, with the bank. Millions involved, and I may have to have it uh, notarized and get a notary public. Well, now I can help you with that, Johnny. Yeah? I know the Republican, know the Republican work for him, what? Would you mind repeating that again? Slowly. <laughs> I said... I knowed a Republican notary public <laughs> that I worked for him. <laughs> like to hear about him, kid? No, thanks. No, I, I got no time. Oh, you talked me into it, kid. <laughs> well, sir, besides being my cousin, Chet was a very interesting fella. Yeah? He was in the coal and ice business, see? But they had a coal shortage, so he hung out a sign that says, Just Ice. Just Ice. Mm -hmm. Yep. And the very first day, he married seven people, sold nine dog licenses, and collected $12 in traffic fines before he figured out what happened. <laughs> what happened? <laughs> then he just took the just I sign, added of the piece to it, and really done business. <laughs> yeah, wait a minute. You say he married seven people? How could he do that? Married couples come in even numbers. Two of the bridegrooms was half-brothers, Johnny. Oh. <laughs> Just one brother all together. <laughs> well, that, that seems reasonable. Yeah, I haven't thought of that. Well, got to get back to my legal work, old timer. I'd like to stand here and talk to you, but I don't want to. <laughs> you go right ahead and study the law, boy. Legal study is a fine thing. Trains the memory. That's important to me because of my cousin Heppelwhite. He died from loss of memory. Oh. <laughs> Nonsense. How could loss of memory kill anybody? He was a parachute jumper, daughter, and forgot to pull the ripcord. <laughs> oh, happy habeas corpus. <laughs> See, I better get busy here. I got plenty of work to do on this contract yet. You know, these bank lawyers are murder. Trying to do business with these guys is like trying to drive a car with a busted transfusion. <laughs> you mean uh, transmission, dearie? Hmm? Transfusion means you give somebody some blood. You said it. Anytime you do business with the old... Th oh, the third... Hey. Hello, Molly. Hi, pal. Hello, Mr. Wilcox. <laughs> <laughs> well, just in the nick of time. Yeah. <laughs> front door. I couldn't get it open. <laughs> well, it is old little Harlow Milcox, the double rich kid. <laughs> Hi, Junior. Hi. Hey, what's with the law books, pal? I'm working out a contract, looking up the law. Some very interesting cases in these books. Hey, speaking of interesting cases, kids, yes. I personally have just handled one of the most famous cases in the world. You, Mr. Wilcox? What kind of case, Junior? Because... A case of pet evaporated milk. <laughs> Mine! <laughs> Look, Junior, I'm talking law, and you delivered well, it. Well, that suits me, because the first law of good housekeeping is the use of safe, economical, nourishing foods, like pet milk. For 65 years, pet milk has been a favored form of milk for the entire family. For babies, for growing children, for cooking. So what time do you have to see Mr. McDonald, McGee? He says any time before the bank closes, but... You know, they don't go home when they lock the doors of a bank at 3 o'clock. They stay there, just sitting around doing nothing until 5 o'clock. You know, gossiping about the customers, like how certain women depositors fill out their slips better than others. You know. Well, now, personally, I don't like to gossip about women, but they do say 
that smart women everywhere consider pet milk a highly important part of their household needs. Won't you need some witnesses to uh, sign the contract, McGee? Oh, sure. And that's why I want you to go along with me. Turns out no good later. You can always say you don't remember signing it, see? Forget the stuff like that is legally referred to as non-cordis digit. <laughs> meaning no string on finger. <laughs> Well, I'll tell you, good housewives and mothers don't need a string on their finger to remember pet milk. Because they know it's just good whole milk, concentrated to double richness, fortified with vitamin D, and sterilized in sealed cans. Why is pet milk good for babies? Why is it good for growing children? Why is it... Why, wise guy? Huh? Look, Milky. Yeah. <laughs> you have to leave now? Right this minute, just because himself here hasn't got a minute to speak to you, and neither have I. Yeah, 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 yeah. I gotta go, kid. And if a guy comes around looking for me, I'm out hunt ducking. You, you mean duck hunting? No, no, no. Hunt ducking. Oh? A fellow named Hunt's trying to sell me a new car. Go on now. <laughs> corny puns. That was the worst I ever heard. Say, you know, Uncle Dennis used to love to hunt ducks, McGee. Remember? Yeah. I remember him at Dugan's Lake. He sat there all day in one of those holes the hunters dig. You know, sort of a pit. Blind? Oh, he might have been a little rocky, but he never... Oh! <laughs> Blind. That's what they call them, I yeah. guess. Well, hand me that Latin dictionary. I want to check a few phrases I made up so this contract won't be too easy for this. Now, Dad read it. I got to keep working. You answer the door. All right. Come in. Oh, it's his honor, the mayor, McGee. Hello, Mr. Mayor. Hello, Molly. Good day, McGee. Hi, boy. Hey, you graduated from law school, didn't you? Magna cum laude. Hmm. They say that's a very good school, too. <laughs> <coughs> yes. <laughs> You must know a lot of Latin. See if you can translate this. Factorum lex amno domini, Luella in toto. Well, that's just a lot of Latin words, McGee. It doesn't make any sense whatsoever. Good. I'll put that right in the contract. I'll show them high binders. <laughs> you know, it's a contract with the bank, Mr. Mayor. McGee's working on it. Big real estate deal. Well, I had enough real estate dealings today to last me till next election. Had a regular riot in my office. Oh, my goodness. What happened? Somebody find your secret bank book, Latrivia, because... No, 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 no. <laughs> of course not. The city simply had a few pieces of real estate advertised for sale today. Ten lots, in fact. Mm -hmm. And over 200 people showed up to buy them. It was first come, first served, of course. Of course. Uh, what'd you serve, Mr. Mayor? Coffee and cake? <laughs> I beg your pardon? She says, what'd you feed them? Probably serve them little finger sandwiches, Molly. You know, the kind that when you try to eat them, you always bite your finger. <laughs> no, 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 McGee, of course not. That's a very silly thought. Yes, it is, <laughs> For a party that big, you couldn't possibly make enough sandwiches. I'd just bake a ham. Oh, and... yeah, ham and potato salad. That's the best. Hey, did you send out invitations for this shindig trip? Because we didn't get uh, Just a minute, McGee, plan. please, please. I didn't plan any party. Hmm? These people didn't come for a party. They, they didn't expect a party. Oh, they it came was to... a surprise, McGee. <laughs> oh, I love surprises. Yeah, me too. Boy, when you can surprise 200 people with a surprise party... I didn't that's... surprise 200 people. <laughs> I didn't surprise anybody. Well, when I said it was first come, first served, I was not talking about food, understand? I was merely using an old expression. I didn't serve any of those people anything to eat. Is that much clear? It is to me. Me too. Good. Now, Just what drinks, else? Huh? Yes. <laughs> no! <laughs> it takes a lot of the taxpayers' money to serve drinks to 200 people, and now... I didn't serve drinks to 200 people! Huh? <laughs> 200 people! People! <laughs> Look! When I said we stole the steelers' rates, you I stole the real estate first come, first curb, curb service. You said I never said I shot the kidding, the winding, fling. You were the ones that... You I never said it. It was the gun. It was... Yes, 
Thanks, lad. Since you're so fond of parties, I'm going to get some friends together tonight and give one for you. Oh, fine. On the city hall lawn, under the old oak tree. Oh, he'd love that, Mr. Mayor. Sure. Wear a shirt with a collar this time, will you, McGee? Okay, boy. Is this a formal party? No. Necktie. <laughs> Good day, Marla. Good day. King's men and it's deductible. Oh, the biggest complaint wherever we go is taxes, taxes, taxes. Nobody wants to work anymore because of all the taxes. Income taxes. This is the kind of thinking that could easily be destructible. Haven't they learned the more they make, the more there is deductible. It's deductible. A man could make a phone call from Jersey to the coast. It used to be expensive, but today you'll hear him boast. It's deductible. It's deductible. It used to be at 20, a man could come alive. But now you don't start living till you're over 65. Crazy world. Crazy time. Love that world. The difference of nothing rhyme. It's irrational, but it's rational. If you decide to take that ride and be a bride and groom at a room, deductible. We are all interested in redemption. How do you get your maximum exemption? The dependent must be one of the following. Grandfather, grandmother, nephew, niece, uncle, and aunt. Father-in-law, mother-in-law, daughter-in-law, brother-in-law, stepson, stepdaughter, stepfather, stepmother, stepbrother, stepsister. I'm telling you, mister, they're deductible. They're deductible. If you're the boss, then you can toss it off as loss or gain. Why complain? Deductible, including offspring. Elizabeth Ann, Betty Lou, Oliver, Dan, Penelope, Sue, Jimmy, Johnny, Daisy, Harry, Randy, Ronnie, Maisie, Mary. Have all you want. McDonald sees this deal I've laid out. I got him sewed up tighter than a tight pair of tight rope walkers tight. And if he... I dropped my papers. Your papers? Sound more like a manhole cover. What have you got the papers wrapped up in? Two sheets of metal. It's an ironclad contract. Oh, no. You see, kiddo, when you do business with a certain... Oh, hey, here it is. Here's the bank. Come on in, the bank. Oh, it's always so nice and shiny in here. How do they keep bank floors so clean? Well, they sweep up the dirt every 15 minutes and pan it for gold. <laughs> Where's Mr. McDonald's office? It's that third one back there with the frosted glass door. And take my word for it, kiddo, that's real frost. I'll <laughs> ask the bank guard if he's here. Here's the bank. Hey, guard. Yes, sir, what can I do for you? Uh, you wish to cash a check? Uh, if so, please go to window three with four character witnesses, your birth certificate, and a letter from your congressman. <laughs> After due investigation and sundry other annoyances... Excuse me, uh, we do not wish to cash a check. We merely... Oh, blotter stealers. Huh? Blotter stealers. <laughs> well, in that case... We don't want to steal any blotters either. Well, we just... Fountain pen fillers? No, he did Well, pardon me, but haven't I seen you people before? <laughs> Didn't you attend the Alderman Wine Gang Weenie Roast at Callahan's Fourth Ward Athletic and Ace's Back-to-Back Club? No, <laughs> oh, we didn't. The reason our faces seem slightly familiar, bud, is that we've been doing business at this bank for 15 years. How long you been here? 16 years, sir. <laughs> I was a bum watching the excavating when they built this bank and was simply absorbed. <laughs> Now then, uh, what did you say your business was here? We didn't say, and it's none of your business, and I don't like your attitude. Well, I can't help my attitude, madam. Turning this darn old gun makes me lopsided. <laughs> Look, but a little more courtesy from you. You're a pretty snide character, but I warn you, I'm Snyder. <laughs> well, I'm delighted to meet you, Mr. Snyder. 
Grouse Martin, and this, I presume, is Mrs. Snyder? No, it is not. I am Mrs. McGee. And don't keep us standing here, Mus Rasson. I got a date with McDonald. I'm late. Late? I thought you were Snyder. <laughs> He's neither. He's McGee. But that's your name, madam. She knows what her name is. She's my wife. Yes, yeah, so let's stop this nonsense. Come on, dearie. Okay, sweetie. <laughs> As soon as I can shake this fella Snyder and get out of my uniform. <laughs> First, we'll go to a movie. I tell you, Buster, this lady is my wife. Uh, Mrs. Late? No, Mrs. McGee. But if you're Mrs. McGee and he's Mr. Late... Oh, I see. You're her late husband. <laughs> well, I thought he looked kind of pale. Well, I better take him into Mr. McDonald's office. He handles all the defunct accounts. Third door down, Mrs. Snyder. <laughs> Come on, Molly. I got a lot of business to transact, and I'm late. No, you're McGee. No, I'm... Well, <laughs> you don't see a big deal pulled off. Hi, McDonald. Here I am, Jerry Thrathole. I got the contract. Shut the door and be quiet till I finish reading this letter. Yes, sir, Mr. McDonald. See them three telephones on his desk, Molly? Yeah. One of them, only one of them, is connected. But during the war, when he thought they were going to be hard to get, he went Stop out. Stop that infernal yammering, McGee. How can I? Oh, excuse me. Madam, did you wish to see me? I'd wish to see you for a long time. And I must uh, say... Mac, uh, this is the little woman, my wife. Molly, Molly, this is Mr. McDonald. Mr. How do you do, I'm sure. Mrs. McGee, I am delighted. It's all too seldom that my quiet little office is graced by such a charming, lovely... Get out of my cigars, McGee! <laughs> now look, McDonald. Yes, yes, yes. Well, I got the contract all drew up. You better have your secretary in as one of the witnesses. Uh, which button calls her? I'll push this one. No, 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 that's the burglar alarm. Oh, no, I... Oh, I... Hand me that telephone. Thank you. Hello, hello, Clancy. This is McDonald. Shut up those alarms. That was a mistake. Sorry, Mac. <laughs> Must have pushed the wrong button. Now then, I drew up the contract very careful. Sign here under my name and my subcontractor will start work tomorrow. Okay, McGee. I don't care who does the work as long as the leaves get raked up. Leaves? What leaves? On that vacant lot next door to our house, Molly. The one the bank owns. The bank has given me a buck and a half an hour to rake the leaves off it, and I got a guy to do it for a buck an hour. <laughs> that way I make half a buck an hour without even getting up off of my sign right here, Mac. <laughs> okay. Bibber and Molly return in a moment. Do you know that pet evaporated milk is one of the biggest bargains on your pantry shelf? Why? Well, first of all, pet milk is twice as rich as ordinary milk. And to use it as you would ordinary milk, you mix it with an equal amount of water. Second, pet milk, good, sweet, country milk, concentrated to double richness, is just right for coffee. And third, you can actually whip pet milk. Use it in place of expensive whipping cream for making delicious desserts. Yes, you can use pet milk as milk, as coffee cream, as whipping cream. And pet milk costs less than half as much as whipping cream or coffee cream, less generally than ordinary bottled milk. So when you need milk or cream, get pet, pet evaporated milk. Boy, I sure must have got old McDonald upset with that fancy contract. There's an evening paper here that driving home, he smacked right into a truck. Heavenly days, was he hurt? Just decapitated him is all. Oh, no. Yep. Lucky for him, he was wearing a high cap. <laughs> a few inches lower, and it would have knocked his head off. Oh, Good night. Good night, all. First evaporated milk, pet milk, brings you Fibber McGee and Molly each week at this time. Be with us again next Tuesday night, won't you?